So my friend Cindy Bettino and I were talking about topics that we like to talk about with business leaders in the community. And Cindy is a certified Vistage speaker, which means that Cindy has been vetted to be able to go in to Vistage, which is a, a CEO roundtable cohort kind of an organization, to come in and speak to them about leading and running their businesses. Uh, she is an energy worker and a life coach which is normally not compatible with this kind of thing. Uh, they shy away from all the woo-woo, but she's also got a degree in, in economics and she's just a brilliant woman and understands business. She's, just, you know, she has, she's on the speaking circuit. She works with uh, business leaders constantly. So when we were talking about this, uh, and then all of a sudden the coronavirus and the shutdowns and the stress showed up, I asked Cindy to come on my show so we can talk about some of the topics that she talks to business leaders about when things are stressful and the fear of the unknown. Cindy, thank you for being on the show. Well, thank you for having me. Um, I, you know, I love you and I love talking to business owners and I love talking to leaders and executives and everyone actually. <laughs> well, the thing, I, the thing I love about you is, you know, like uh, you, you're, you're a certified uh, energy healer, right? And you're, you know, so, so most of the time that wouldn't be a normal conversation for business people, but they welcome you in with open arms because you're able to straddle those, those two worlds and bring the really important things that are happening with, within our psyches and, and all the underlying stuff that happened in, just because we're business people does not mean we're not human beings, right? Oh, absolutely. And, and, and how we show up as humans is, is huge. It's, it's, you know, the difference between us showing up in our genius zone or us showing up in our bad habits. You know, so, um, and, and bowing to fear. I mean, we're human beings. Fear is real. I mean, we, it's palpable right now. I mean, it's palpable right now, fear. Right. And, and it's, right now, it's be, mostly because it's the complete unknown. One minute, we're get, one minute we think we're getting through this. The other minute, everything's shut down. One minute, it's 15 weeks. One minute, it's five weeks. And you basically bring uh, these leaders through uh, you, you use the Johari window to talk about uncertainty. Can you tell me more about that? So Johari's window is, is a, a concept that was created by two psychologists in the 1950s. And it, they, they used it as a way of helping teams grow and build and get to know each other. Um, and they ask each other, you know, specific questions. And they, they look at, there are four panes to Johari's window. And again, it's all about team building and getting to know people in a very different way. And one of the four panes of Johari's window is being in the unknown. So what do you do in the unknown? You know, if we talk about in Johari's window, how it was originally created, it would be like, what don't you know about you? And what don't, what are things that I don't know about me? So like a simple, silly example I give is like my father um, was an incredible athlete. He was a boxer. He was a gymnast. He was a PE teacher and a coach, but he never picked up a golf club. And if anyone had asked him, and he grew up in New York City, he didn't probably know what a golf club was <laughs> for most of his life. So, so um, if anyone had asked him, you know, is he can you play golf? He'd say, I don't know. He wouldn't know. Nobody would know. Nobody would know how he'd play golf. And, and you know, of course, at 65 years old, he decides to play. He picks, up a, he picks up a golf club, and he's an amazing golfer. Like, who'd have thunk? We don't you know. know. So my, there my, dad was, about my dad, my dad uh, ran, you know, Burger Kings and Hardee's and restaurants and stuff uh, all his life. And then when he went to Florida, uh, he picked up golf in his late 60s. And who knew? He was a who great knew? golfer. Yeah. And so, so the beautiful thing about um, being in this place called the unknown, right? So again, Johari, as we know, one of the pains is being in the unknown and what do we do in the unknown? So I take a different spin on Johari's window. Um, I take it from team building to what are our opportunities? What are our opportunities in the unknown? So when we're in the unknown, like we are right now, we're in a truly dichotomous place. We're in this place of fear. We have no control. No one can give us a definite answer. And most business owners and high-level executives and even people that are in um, a high level of their own profession, right? We like control. Mm. Control is cool. We, we dig it, man. That's what we want to do. We like controlling. We're great leaders. We want to know and we want the answers and we want the research and we want the science and we want, we want, we want, we want. Well, guess what? In the unknown, we have none of that. We can't control it. 
right? Can't anticipate. Nobody can give us a definite answer. It changes every day, right? So we can bow to fear. And when we bow to fear, we collapse, right? We give up. We make wild and crazy decisions. We're going to close tomorrow. No one's going to get paid. Um, the sky is falling. Catast catastrophizing. Living in the wreckage of the future. Right? Now, in the same pain, in, in the unknown, there's also this other place, though. This is where all of creativity exists. This is where our songs are being made. This is where inventions are created. This is where innovation exists. This is where all possibilities exist in the unknown. So where do we go? Like, what do we do? Yeah, that's the, question, that's the question I have is how do, we, how do we move from looking at the car crash that hasn't happened and move us over to that creative side and tap into that? Well, I think first thing that we have to do is take some level of control because we are control freaks, right? So there are some things that, that we can do um, right now, right, in the unknown. Um, we can apply for SBA loans. We can uh, look at all different strategies and, and how and what to do with our employees and, and um, do research on what is being offered to us right now, which is a lot. But, you know, we're sending people home to work virtually. Now, some companies, that's what they do, right? But some companies have always had an office. They've always had an office. And they've never really trusted their employees to work virtually. Mm. Well, what if we send our employees home, they're working virtually, and what if they actually do more, do better? Right? Do we really need that office building? Do we really need that office? Is that something that we really need to do? Can we have our employees work virtually more often? No, I, I was not a Zoom person. I, I really didn't know anything about Zoom. I'm learning Zoom. And I'm going to be running uh, Sterling Women, which is, has over 100 women that, and men that come together. And we're going to be doing it on Zoom. There, there's so much so this innovation is, So this is, this, is a, this is a monthly organized gathering that you mm -hmm. do in person and have perfected in person, in person over years. And years. now all of a sudden, like that, you have to do this virtually. I don't have to. I could cancel it. Right. But I don't want to cancel it. So if I don't want to cancel it or if I don't want to stop business, what am I going to do? Right. Right. That's what there, there are. There are restaurants um, that have never used Grubhub because they didn't want to pay for them or have never used any of the other delivery services out there because they didn't, they take, they take a chunk of their money. Right. Well, guess what they're doing now? They're right. using all that technology. They're using all that innovation. So I would ask business owners right now, what innovations and technologies are there out there that you have said, nah, I'm not doing it. Mm. And that are there for you right now that might actually give you a very different result than you think. So, um, so yeah, so I think that in that way, uh, how can we have meetings together? My daughter um, is working virtually and they have team meetings via whatever platform they have in France. I don't know if it's Zoom, but they have team meetings every morning. And not only do they have team meetings, but they also have like a, a um, what does she call it? Like a, a weather checkup. So how are you doing today? Green, I'm doing great. Yellow, I'm in. Red, I need help. Um, but then they also have to name three things that they're going to accomplish that day and three things that they accomplished yesterday. And I just, I think that's freaking brilliant. I mean, that's a way. Account to, accountability, intention, all that. And also the team stays together and it's connection. Um, so I think that is a new way, a new way of doing meetings, a new way of, of allowing our staff to work virtually more often, um, new technology and new platforms that we never took the time to study and learn, that we're learning that we might actually want to integrate into our business. So I want to pull you back a little bit, because again, your expertise is moving people through uh, you know, so that they can see the possibilities of all these yes. technologies, right? So, so you know, we were, before we turned on the recording, we were talking about how people are acting like five-year-olds. So, in other words, we're on the fear side of the Jahari's window, mm -hmm. not seeing the possibility, but people are like retreating into 
uh, what they do when they're scared, when they're in the unknown. Mm -hmm. Talk more about that. Okay, so um, I've had Vistage chairs actually ask, ask me if I wanted to be a Vistage chair, and I said, absolutely not. I know people. They know business right. in more ways than I know people in all those different ways. And, and our, our psyches are complicated, but not that complicated. Um, and there is a five-year-old part of our psyche. Now, again, it's dichotomous. When, when we are, there's one thing that's, that's true all across the board. When we behave like a five-year-old, we are completely irrational. But when it's in love and when it's in joy and happiness, this is where we giggle. And I love to play in puddles. I'll admit it, you know, if I'm not wearing something that has to go to the dry cleaners or could get ruined, you know, I'll play in puddles. And this is where we roll around with our kids on the floor. This is where, you know, we be, we're silly. Right? So when we're being silly and irrational, it's not necessarily a bad thing. But when fear comes into play, that's when our bad habits come out. And that's when we can really behave badly. And then that five-year-old can collude with some of the other parts of our psyche that make us behave even worse <laughs> and takes us as far away from our genius zone as possible. And you're seeing a lot of that right now. I mean, fear can really make people do stupid things. So how do we see that for ourselves? How do we know that we're, we're not in the joyful five-year-old, we're kind of in our fearful five-year-old, and then it's ricocheting all, off all the um, other Well, just imagine that you've given your five-year-old the keys to your BMW. What do you think is going to happen? Yeah, BMW is not going to last long, and the five-year-old is no. going to get hurt. So if you find yourself crashing and burning, right, or if somebody's looking at you like a screw is loose, right, because when we behave irrationally, we're not behaving rationally, which means the screw is loose, right? If someone is telling us that we should, we don't need to be angry or rageful or paranoid, all of those things come out. Those are bad habits. So you're saying um, listen to the feedback. Listen, oh God, Watch yeah. what's going on around you and listen to the feedback. Yeah. I mean, if people are telling you like, the CDC is saying, do not leave your house. And you're like, ah, screw it. I'm going to go do blah, 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 blah. That's behaving like a five-year-old. Mm. Right? If the CDC is saying, or the, the mayor, or the governor, whatever, the governor of Virginia has just said today that they're closing schools for the rest of the year and only essential uh, businesses will stay open. If you're not an essential business and you stay open, they're not allowing, allowing diamonds. What you're saying, anymore. what you're saying is we can confuse the five-year-old with the maverick. Like I'm a maverick. I'm going to go out and I'm tough and I'm all that stuff. And, and really you're being your five-year-old, but it just looks adult and tough. And you're mad. a rebel. Yeah. You, the rules don't belong, you know, belong to you. That's a five-year-old. Right? Mm -hmm. And then when our five-year-old colludes with this place called our lower self, which is angry, rageful, judgmental, has negative pleasure, you know, mm -hmm. then lots of things. I mean, real bad train wrecks there, like super bad train wrecks. And, and so in this time, so we can know that we're not behaving um, or we're behaving out of our five-year-old and uh, in our bad habits when we make really poor decisions. I mean, that's just the bottom line. When we're making poor decisions and we can't see another way out. So a lot of times, you know, when a child is really scared, what, what do we do? Well, we comfort them. If we're, if, we're, if, we're, if we're in a good place, we comfort them. Right. So we try to bring them to a comforting place. So when there's an adult that's behaving like a five-year-old, then they need to be led out of that place, right, and comforted to help them see that there are other options there for them, right? So we have to basically we parent them. You know, right. that's, so that's, that's a topic of another one of your talks is how do you get your, your employees out of the victim mode, right? So they, yeah. I, love, I love how we weave into this because I, I think a lot, of our, a lot of that fearful ac action, the anger, the judge, all that stuff comes from when we're feeling like a victim. Absolutely. So how, do we pull, how do we pull other – I know how to pull myself out of the victim mentality. Sometimes. Right. How do we pull other people out of the victim mentality? Yes. So, and that's the key. So um, the, you know, the three types of employees that I've, I, I've identified as the most problem employees, and I, I used to manage over 100 people when I used to manage gyms and back in the day. And um, so uh, are, are the needy employees. 
So when someone is being really needy, mom, 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 <laughs> when you're being really needy, right? They're in fear. That's, that is a, that's a bad behavior. When someone behaves like a victim, it's, it's, but, okay, so let me clarify. They're needy because they are in fear, but that is not the truth. And how they show up as a needy employee or a needy person is not the truth of who they are. Mm. The truth of who they are is when they're in their genius zone, right? They're great speakers. They're nurturing hearts. They are, are intelligent. They're funny. They're, right? So the victim employee is another one. So when you're behaving like a victim, when you have victim mentality, that is when there's fear. There's fear there, right? And again, that is not their truth. Their truth is that they are very wise and they are very grounded, very strong. That's their genius zone. But when people are like, everything happens to me, like they're like Eeyore. Everything, at, why is this happening to me, right? When it's, it's their fault. This is all their fault. They need to fix it. So that type of behavior, again, bad habits, five-year-old. Um, and also then there's the bully. And those are the three out of, there are five. It, this comes from actually um, uh, a psychological model that was created by Wilhelm Reich and um, who studied under Freud. And it's called the five characterological defenses. And um, so there are five different characterologies, but it's those. Right, three. And, I, and I want, I actually want you to come back. We're going to do a whole show on that. We're going to do an entirely <laughs> show on that. What I want to stay focused on though, is we're, we're talking about all this fear, right? The fear and victimhood mm -hmm. that's going on with us as leaders, with our employees, as people who are trying to figure out, do they have jobs and how do they get their jobs yep. done and what do they do? Right. And then with the community, uh, and what we're talking about is, you know, the fear-based person and then the, the, you know, the five-year-old and then the possibilities-based person, right? So mm -hmm. now pulling the, pulling the victim employee, like, so, so now you got yourself centered, you got yourself grounded, you're in possibility. Now you got to bring that, now you got to bring your people along with you. Yes. Yes. So, so for, you want to do victim first? So for yeah, just, I want to do victim because I, okay. I want to stay with victim and focus on that. So as a leader, right, when I find myself in victim mode, if I can't get myself back, then I'm going to reach out and ask for help, right? If I'm feeling, oh, woe is me, I don't know what to do, I'm, I'm overwhelmed, this is what happens with the victim. They get into overwhelm very quickly, I don't know, I don't know what, to, and they get stuck. They get stuck in this, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, okay? And they get stuck in the why me, why me, why me? So once I'm able to pull myself out, then I'm able to, to reach out to my employees that are stuck in that same place, and I'm there to tell them that they are really smart and they, they do know what to do. They love to research. I'm going to give them different things that they can do to research. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have them research the different technologies. I'm going to have them research the different platforms. I'm going to have them so research. Give them, give, them, give them jobs that are going to help the company. Right, that they are really good at. Mm. Right. And that will help pull them out of the victim mode because they are wise. They are grounded. They are strong. They are uh, re uh, researchers. They, they love to think. They love to put connect the dots. This is what they love to do. And they love to be here, like in their head, like a, the needy. They're doers. You got to give them like. Go do this and go do that, not just right. like research and think right. and 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 go look at different theories and stuff. You need them to give them like real action items because they're your doers, right? Go out and find maybe uh, different, I don't know, different offices that we can use <laughs> and we can split people up so that everybody is in, you know, the, a safe zone or, you know, so so for the needy employee, so if I'm a needy leader, right, because we all have bad habits, so we're all going to fall into something, once I can get myself back to center, right, so the needy people, just as a quick example, the needy people are the ones, and they, they're the ones that took all the toilet paper, hmm. right, because they can never have enough, and they're so afraid they're not going to have enough that they're going, so that's okay. So... So the, the needy person, we're going to pull them out by having them talk so we can have them, we can take the research from the victim, victim, 
and give it to the needy and have the needy then give uh, uh, give a, a lecture or a talk on, okay, this is how we're going to move forward. Because they're great speakers. They love to speak. In mm. fact, you can usually hardly ever get them to shut up. So getting them to talk about something and getting them to talk to, so they might want to be the ones, you might want to have them do all the check-ins with all the teams. Be a great place for them. They're also typically very sensitive and very intuitive. So having them reach out, how are you doing? They might be the ones that are reaching out to all the different employees, how are you? Give me your weather report for today. Give me your weather report for today. So um, reassuring that. them. That's, that's, such a, that's such a very tangible tool to give to people. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't know we were going to talk about any of this. This is all. Oh no! I'm, uh, this is uh, this is this is the ADD uh, version of Mark's interview skills. Usually, I'm pretty focused, but I you know there's so much I want to pick from you. And for me, what I, I'm hoping people who are listening, I'm hoping that there's a thread here for me because what I what I'm really noticing is uh, you know the people who are just you know in their fear. In their in their in their um, smallness, you know, because of the unknown, not because of any character uh, lack of character or anything like that. It's just there's so much unknown, there's so much misinformation. You can't really there's not solid ground to figure out what the next steps are. So going mm -hmm. through your Jahari window and talking about you know where are you in that in that spectrum of fear to what are the possibilities and how can you pull yourself out. You know, mm -hmm. how are you reacting as a, as a child, right? Mm -hmm. With childlike curiosity, possibility, what's new, or, you know, childhood's fear. And then how do you help your employees? I'm hoping there's a thread in there that, mm -hmm. that is uh, useful in this conversation. I found it useful. I'm just hoping it translated. That's all. Yeah, I hope, to, I hope they do too. I, I think a, a really great um, time, uh, time spent for um, all CEOs, all business owners is – this whole corona, this is a this is a game changer. We're in a huge game changer right now. And really stepping back and looking, I mean, taking the big picture. So I, I talk about um, the bald eagle and how the bald eagle, I think, um, exemplifies what a fierce leader is. And the bald eagle has this incredible vision they see peripherally as well as they see frontally so it's, they have this 180 degree vision and right now that's what leaders need they need to look at okay so this is where my industry was this is where it is it was yesterday <laughs> this is where it is in this moment and where is it going now because as fierce leaders we have to be really flexible and we, we thought it was going here before the coronavirus but look, it, it's shifting. And how is it shifting? And on a daily basis, how is it shifting? And how can we then adapt with it to it um, so that when we come back, when we get everybody on the ground running again, how are we going to do that? What's it going to look like? Um, how are we going to keep everybody inspired? And, and so when they do come back, um, what, and what have we learned from it? So, so having that 180 vision and taking that time in the unknown, right, to, to be in that creative edge, that innovative edge, right, rather than just going, okay, we're closing everything down and oh my God, and, and we're watching the world collapse, right, which is very easy, easy to do right now. So, um, but, oh, we had one more employee though. We had the, oh, the bully. Well, well we're going to go through, because you're going to, will you come back and actually go through all my employee, all okay. the employees and how to, how to, how to manage all those and how to lead the different kinds of people. Okay. We'll do a complete show on that. I would okay. appreciate that. But this is, this was a specific conversation I wanted to have because right now we're in the fear stage. Three weeks from now, two weeks from now, I think we're going to be in the, okay, what do we do now stage? So I want, if we, if, we can, if we can kind of close it here and then do the other show, that'd be great. But of course, final thoughts, because you look like you have just a little bit more left. Well, I just, I, it always helps me to have a plan. <laughs> Even if it's a plan that's going to change tomorrow. Right. So I think when we can balance fear by creating or doing or doing what we can in the moment. 
right? And being open, I think it's, it's essential that people be open right now to anything and everything, especially the stuff that you, you poo-pooed before, especially the stuff you poo-pooed before. It, it, that, was and good, being, yeah, that was a good point. You, know, like, by, you were, by too, really you were being, too good to use Grubhub. Now you're, now you're all about Grubhub. Yeah. Now Grubhub is the only thing bringing you money. Right. So um, Zoom is going to be Zoom right now is the way to communicate. I, I'd done Zoom a couple of times, but so I think being open, um, if you find yourself in fear, reach out, have somebody help bring you back to your genius zone, um, remind you of what you're really good at, give people tasks that align with how they are in their genius zone. And, um, and, and try to have that 180 vision and step back and kind of look when, you, when you're ready to. And unfortunately, Mark, I think it's going to be a lot longer than two weeks before we're. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking stages, though. I'm thinking we're going to be going through stages of, of how we're handling this, right? Right now, it's shock, right? And <laughs> uncertainty. Then after this, it's going to be, all right, now we're in, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll start to be able to figure things out. I think so, too. I think so. so this this was this was great. Thank you for making sense of my craziness. Uh, if you heard anything <laughs> in the background, I do have granite counters being cu cut as we're as we're doing this uh, this podcast. So I'm a little distracted. But uh, Cindy, thank you for your just your wisdom and your your insight. Thank How can you. people get in touch with you? Oh, uh, the best way to get in touch with me: email Cindy at transform dash heal h e a l dot com. You don't and, have to remember um, that. I'm going to write, I'm writing all, we're going to have all this in the show notes. So go keep going. Oh, okay. And then um, my website is www.transform-shield.com. And um, I'm doing a whole set and you can find me on LinkedIn too, is a great way um, to find me on LinkedIn. And I'm doing a whole series during this pandemic of uh, daily video blogs that have a lot of humor, um, but also have lots of, lots of information. Oh, so, follow, follow, yeah. Follow, please follow Cindy on LinkedIn. Her husband is hysterical he's he's, right, he's the comic relief to cindy's wisdom it is hysterical it's such good stuff so yeah in fact we're doing more after this so yeah. great thank thank you thank you so much for sharing your wisdom thank you for doing this on short notice so that we can get this out for uh for what's happening today uh uh so thank you have a great day you too and to everybody else uh stay sane stay calm remember to breathe from your belly and i love you have a great rest of the day.